If you live in a high-rise building, one concern is whether or not you're allowed to have a pet. That doesn't stop us though. Recently, Johor singer Zara Sophia was charged in a Sessions Court for illegally keeping a sun bear cub in her kale apartment, mistaking it for a dog. But wait, are we actually allowed to keep dogs in our condos? Buying landed property is cheap for us new to adulting. And if you've got a fur baby, where the heck are they going to live? For all you doggo parents out there, you've got questions about keeping your dog in your condo. We've got the answers. Who gets to decide? It all starts with where your condo is even located. Because the local council laws governing your area override condo management rules. By law 14 of the third schedule of the Strata Management, Maintenance and Management Regulations of 2015, actually does provide that a proprietor shall not keep any animal that may cause annoyance or nuisance to other proprietors or which may be dangerous to the safety and health of other proprietors. In other words, you are allowed to keep your dog in your condo if they're well behaved. But still, not all districts allow it. In the Klang Valley, for example, councils that don't allow dogs in high-rise buildings are the Padaling Jaya City Council, Ampang Jaya Municipal Council, and Kajang Municipal Council. But the councils who do include the Kuala Lumpur City Hall and the Subang Jaya Municipal Council. So most would skip the hassle and hunt for pet-friendly condos in these places instead. What kind of dogs are allowed? You may be aware that larger breeds like Golden Retrievers won't be allowed. So what dog size is considered acceptable then? Smaller dogs are generally really accepted because they require less space to roam around. But if you want to be 100% sure, DBKL even has a specific list. It includes Pomeranians, Chihuahuas, and Toy Poodles, just to name a few. However, you are still limited to one small dog per condo, even if your district allows it. What other requirements do you need to fulfill? All dogs require a license, including the small ones, which must be renewed regularly at your local council for a fee. Not only is licensing your dog the law, it also helps ensure that your pet will be returned home safely if they get lost. But those living in a high-rise building need to get written approval from the apartment's management to apply for a license. Oh, and did you know that restricted breeds like German Shepherds need to go through obedience training to get a license? Because the country is concerned about its aggressive reputation of being guard dogs. So, these larger breeds are only allowed on landed property with a visibly placed beware of dog sign at the front and back of the house. What if the management still says no? You as the condo unit's owner then have the right to challenge those rules through an online application called the Strata Management Tribunal. As as long as it is made known that your dog is in line with the district requirements, the management may give in to the court upon a successful challenge. But bear in mind that the appeal might not be considered if you're only renting the place or if your district doesn't allow it in the first place. Now that you've got all the green lights, how can you and your doggo stay out of trouble? Most importantly, pets must not be an annoyance or nuisance to neighbours. This simply means that they should not cause any inconvenience or damage to the property and to the people who live there. Being a responsible pet owner is very important, especially if you you live in a condo, always clean up your pet ways, like to make your pet, train your pet well and always keep your pet under proper supervision. If you are planning to keep your dog in your condo, make sure to check your local council laws and be a competent pet parent. Because the most important thing our pets need other than our love is a safe and proper home. And let's try to stick to domesticated animals instead of wild cubs on the endangered species list.